Roguelikes and player freedom are usually not two things you put in the same sentence. A decent portion of roguelikes assign you X amount of randomised items per stage, and if you don't like them, better hit that restart button. Risk of Rain 2, however, is not just any roguelike. It has many design choices that differ from the rest of the genre. The fact that the game is in 3D being the most obvious. What might not be so obvious on the surface of it though, is the design that went into allowing the player to tailor the build they get during a run, to an extent at least. That is what I'll be exploring in this video, the design choices that went into creating the freedom that Risk of Rain 2 allows the player. Items on the whole act against the idea of being able to create your own build. They are spawned from chests at different rarities and vary wildly in their effects. Some even have the potential to shift your entire run by picking them up. However, there is a key detail that is the reason why you can even create your builds in the first place. The items stack. The exact way the player can stack them will be talked about in more detail later, but what's important is that different items stack in different ways. Over the course of a run, stacks of items can provide effects ranging from ignoring almost all damage to dealing a critical hit with every shot. The knowledge that comes with learning when to stack different items and at what amount, which characters benefit most from given stacks of items, how much of 57 Leaf Clover might affect the odds of an item activating, are all things that make the game a lot more fun to experiment with and learn which builds work and which don't. It's the, frankly, generic effects of many of the items that allow for such experimentation. You'll find that the more specific an effect gets, the fewer situations that item will work in or characters the item works well with. Additionally, some items lead into other items. For example, getting Lensmaker's glasses and then Harvester Scythe is a good synergy, but either of those two could also synergize with a Predatory Instincts or even a Shatter Spleen, for example. The nature of this item progression is similar to that of an RPG skill tree, where you can upgrade each piece of the build by stacking them. However, it's much more freeform than that, because of the fact that they are items. For example, the bandit and the railgunner can both get guaranteed crits on some of their shots, so they don't actually need to stack Lensmaker's glasses to benefit from having a Harvester Scythe or Shatter Spleen. The characters of Risk of Rain 2 are quite varied and have lots of different, sometimes overlapping, playstyles between them, from the effect on hit gods like Commando and Huntress to the one shot gods like Loader and Railgunner. And while the abilities do differentiate the characters significantly, a lot of the abilities are created like blank canvases to allow items to take control of the character. This design allows players to take control of how the character should behave during a run, rather than defining how the run is going to go by picking a particular character and sticking with a given playstyle. Characters' abilities can be unlocked through challenges during runs of the game, but most of them are pretty simple and easy. I mean, I did most of them my first run. The choice between which abilities to pick on which character sets up an interesting decision. In some characters, there is synergy with particular items that the player will want to hunt for. The prime example always brought up is the Holy Bungus, an absolute must-have for any static turret engineer worth their salt. And in other characters, the greater decision comes from choosing which of the two abilities to take before starting the run, as this in turn will affect which items will be taken and ultimately the build the player ends up with. Are you a rebar multi or a nail gun multi? Are you a quickscope railgunner or a reloading railgunner? Are you a playable bandit or uh, whatever that is? Apart from having item designs that are good, the game also encourages the players to seek out opportunities to make the build that they want. The primary way the game does this is with 3D printers. 3D printers allow the player to exchange one item of a given rarity for a specified item of the same rarity. Over an entire run, the player needs to draft which printers they want to use and which are worth giving up sections of their current build for. Nan 
The whether or not to use a 3D printer is one of the few significant ways the player can curb the RNG of the game, along with multi-shop terminals and the recycler active item. Additionally, scrappers increase the value of 3D printers by allowing you to pick exactly what items you trade for, but this doesn't change the skill ceiling as it still takes knowledge to understand which items deserve to be swapped out. Scrappers also have another small disadvantage, which is that it takes time to use them, which is wasted seconds increasing the difficulty slowly. The other thing is that I find scrappers are quite hard to come by, so for the ultimate convenience of choosing which item you swap, you pay in luck and time. An extra layer of knowledge required to bend the RNG of your run to your will are the various secret locations and other specifics that you can use to get certain items or access certain environments. The easy example here is the secret room in the abandoned aqueduct, where learning how to open this door by allows you to access some really good green items, on some characters at least. Another example of this could be the locations of the newt altars throughout the levels. Knowing where they could spawn allows you to optimize searching routes and gives you a better chance of getting to the bazaar on a stage that benefits you. Why would it benefit you? Well, because of another secret, the void fields, which can of course be gotten to by and really allows you to fine tune your build. The choice of three items similar to a multi shot in the early game defines a build, and then the later game can really change the course of a run, if desired. In conclusion, it's clear that Risk of Rain 2 is far more generous of a roguelike than many others. The game assists you in getting the items that you want in interesting ways, without entirely eliminating the randomness that defines the genre and is what makes it fun. The game's items themselves are designed in a way to encourage chasing a better build each run, and the characters are designed to be built upon in differing and interesting ways. Those design choices are what makes Risk of Rain 2 exciting to play every single run. Thanks for watching, a little bit of a shorter video this time, hope you still enjoyed it. As always, links to all the stuff I used in the description. Special thanks to Goombafire for looking over the script for this one.